everybody, Craig Warwick here with a review of the Ring Yamamura Sadako figure from Bandai. Sadako is the ghost, for want of a better term, from the Japanese Ring movie. Ring is an awesome movie, it's so much better than all of its sequels and indeed better than, I think, the American remake and the Korean one as well. But I'm not here to talk about the merits of remakes, I'm here to look at this figure. So let's take a look at the box. We've got nice graphics on the front, you have the Ring shape here and there's a lot of symbolism in the ring in the movie with Sadako's curse propagating itself on and on and also it's the view she had when she got thrown down a well and looked up as it was closed over her. We also have here the kanji for Sada. Sada is the first part of her name, Sadako, and it is uh, the meaning is basically chastity. Um, again it has various meanings, I'm not really here to discuss the, the metaphors of the book but um, or the movie indeed. There's not much more going on in the front. We can see all the pieces. We'll take a look at them more closely. Uh, we have Ring Yamamura Sadako down the side and on the back we have pictures of what's included. So we have a good picture here of the main figure and up here we have some pretty typical Japlish simple style and heroic action. It's English, doesn't make a lot of sense in English but there we are. Here we have Sadako Freshly spawned out of a TV set, bent over with her fingerless nails crawling back. We have here the classic, this is the last thing you ever see, with her engorged eye peering out from her hair. And it looks like we also get a TV and a cursed video cassette. And we can take Sadako apart so that she can haunt your living room in style. Then on the other side, we don't have really much on the top, nothing much on the bottom. A lot of stuff, blah blah blah. Anyway, let's crack her open. And here we have Sadako in the tray, we have the figure itself. There's a couple of hair pieces here, and well, there's three hair pieces additional to this one. We have the television and the stand that it goes on, cursed video, the cursed video cassette, and the bent legs and clawing hands. So let's get her out. And this is Sadako out of the box. I have to say, on first impression, she is a Japanese lady with long hair in a white dress. Not much going on to be honest. Looking at her like this she just doesn't look that impressive but that's because she isn't supposed to be posed in this neutral position. She has to take her more ghostly stance. And when she's hunched over like this she does give a bit more of a creepy feel. So I'm really loving that that the figure starts to come alive or come undead when you pose it more. For articulation I'm not going to go through all of it but just want to point out that her arms are really well articulated with this extra shoulder joint added in up here that lets her just <coughs> She has a lot of added articulation up at the shoulder so that she can really bring her arms forward and basically she's got the standard articulation you would expect from a collector's six inch figure. Her hair obviously hinders her head movement a little, but actually because it's coming forward, it doesn't really hinder it that much. She can look probably further back than any female figure with long hair has ever managed to before. And she's doing all right on the forward side as well. Good going, Mrs. Yamamura. Ms. Yamamura. No one was getting into you, were they? The paintwork is very minimal, her arms are a fairly uniform colour, as a oh Sadako we can see your neckers, Pantsumichata, that's mean I saw your knickers in Japanese, and um, yeah there's not much going on in terms of paint, her hair is fairly flat but you know she's, that's all she really needs, the only real paint application is on her torn ragged nails here. I mean look at mine. Mine are getting as bad as Sadako's. I know where you're coming from love. Oh. And speaking of paint, here's the Sadako that I made after I saw the movie the very first time way back in probably 2000 or 2001. Um, I did this from memory. Didn't really have any reference pictures of what she looked like. She's lost a foot over the years. And I did a much muddier thing as if she had actually literally crawled out a well. But if you go and look at the movie, she has this much more clean and ghost-like appearance. The sculpting on Sadako is very good, if again very plain. I'm going to reveal a, a bit of a spoiler from Ring 2 here, remove her hair and you can see her pretty plain face. Uh, but uh, there's really not much great detail going on. But then 
the only time we really saw Sadako's face was when they uh, made a clay sculpt of it, just suggesting what she would have looked like. The hair itself is sculpted really well, it flows naturally, and the dress too. All the lines are very clean, well done. It's very simple and effective. I like that, but you know when you import a figure you always pay that bit extra and you're expecting a bit more for your bucks, but we always get that with the accessories and let's take a look at them now. As you saw in the package, Sadako comes with these alternate hair pieces and actually on closer inspection only one of them is an alternate hair piece and the other two are alternate heads. So let's take a look at the hair piece. We've seen this one. This is of course the Sadako death stare for when she crawls out of your living room TV, looks at the state of your carpet and curtains and just had enough of you. Gives you the evil eye. So that's that hairstyle. And then you reveal her really plain face. And all the horror vanishes somehow. Vanishes. Although if that came to my door I might be quite horrified. And it can be replaced by this hairpiece, which is just purely covering her face. So she can do her well walk. <laughs> Plain. And like I said, the other two pieces are alternate heads for her. So let's pop this one off. And pop this one on. Really, the difference between this and the the alternate hairpiece we saw just a second ago is very minimal but what you do get here is that the alternate head offers the neck a much greater range of motion so that her hair can go flush against her shoulder there for when she's crawling forward and we've got the other piece again this one lets her hair go flush against there lets the crawling forward and it's flat so that it can be rested against the ground when she's crawling. So as you can see, because her skirt is a fairly hard sort of rubbery plastic, we can't get her into a proper kneeling pose like this. So we have to take all our clothes off and you do that by ripping our legs off, throwing away our skirt and then just uh, letting Sadako run around in her pants all day. Da 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 da! Kawaii ne! So when you've got Sadako just in her underwear, you take her skirt apart, this lower part, it's a much harder plastic than the other skirt, and you just assemble it around her posed body. And it still gives you some movement in the feet, but not a lot you can do beyond that. And then Sadako can get into the, the crawling position. But to do that, well, I guess we can do it just like this. Oh, I'll lower the camera down because that's not impressive, is it? Not that this is a great deal more impressive at all. I think once it gets to this point, looking at it, I'm seeing it's someone crawling along the ground. It's not that impressive. But if you have seen the movie, I think you get a lot more from this figure. And I'm actually really loving it. So you can see her hair is falling flat against the ground there because of that interchangeable part. And we've actually got interchangeable hands for her as well. I'll just show you those. The hands swap out really easily. These are the ones I just had on a second ago. And they're not hugely different, but they do capture that clawing across the carpet. Oh, it wasn't a carpet, it was a tatami mat. The clawing across the tatami mat she did when she came out the TV to kill Ryuchi. I can't remember the guy's name now. I just checked it online, his name was Ryuji. Ah, I was close enough, wasn't I? So that's Sadako all bent over, but <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that about figure, but here we go. Um, she also has other accessories. She has this, it is her cursed video cassette. When you watch it, you'll get a phone call, and seven days later, she'll come out your TV and fucking criticize your curtains. Um, it's very plain as a design. I can't remember the movie, I thought these would be clear with spools inside, maybe that wasn't the case. But the the videotape itself was very plain in the movie, it didn't have a label, that's why people watched it not knowing what it was. So yeah, this accessory isn't something that Sadiko actually interacts with, it's just a nice little addition to have to go with her. But we do get this nice prop of Ryuji's TV here. It's got the image of Sadako's well on it there in the middle that she would emerge from and walk towards you and come out of your TV. And it's 
hollow. There's not a lot to it, but it's a really nice prop. And I can see a lot of people using that in other displays. This does have an additional thing. The TV screen comes out and can be exchanged with, whoops, this one. It has a hole in the middle with a peg and I think you can see where we're going with this. Let me just assemble this for you. Just pop the TV screen in the back, click it into place and then I hope you don't mind Miss Yamamura but I'm going to pull your knickers off and ram you through a TV screen. There we go, so Sadako can emerge from the TV and this is why we have the the hair that doesn't have the flat bottom, her head doesn't, well does it reach the, no her head doesn't quite reach the ground when she's coming out the TV so we do need that other head. So there we have Sadako coming out of the TV, gonna kick the shit out of you, give you a dirty look and my god you'll be dead. So I guess you could mess about with the combinations of the different heads and the hairstyles here, different hands. But something to watch out for here is that she is quite precariously balanced. Because this is very light, it does tip forward easily. Um, this would be particularly good if she came out the, the TV set and just fell instantly flat on her face. That would teach the ghostly cow a lesson. So yeah, that's Sadako from The Ring. All in all, a very plain figure, not anything to write home about. The accessories, again, are very plain. Everything's very dull here. So everything's relying on how much you get out of the movie, I guess. I personally love the movie, so I really like this figure. I think it really captures everything she was about in the movie and just really can fit into all those poses she's so famous, but infamous for. So I'll just leave you with the plain common sense of don't go having sex with things in the sea, otherwise you might have a freaky baby like this. Frolic and brown, goblins be thine. Ja ne. Sayonara. Bye bye.